Good morning. Welcome to East Tucson Baptist Church. I'm Carl, and this is our prayer and reflection time. Since this is going to be for our church service on the day of Halloween, I thought I'd do something a little different. So just let me adjust the mood and tell you a little ghost story about when I was in church. I used to work at my church, and I would unlock the church for services in the morning. And so since it was a larger church, I'd go around from room to room unlocking things, going inside and checking on the AC. For many of the guys who worked this facility's job, the nursery was always a creepy place. And that's true for me. I even found it a little spooky at times, especially this Sunday. I unlock the door. I walk in. I walk up to check the first AC unit, and I hear this distant heartbeat. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. And so I start walking around, and I'm kind of wondering, what is that sound? It can't be a heartbeat, can it? Boom, boom. Boom, boom. And, you know, I'm starting to get a little freaked out. This is weird. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. I mean, they shouldn't be hearing a heartbeat. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. And, you know, I just felt like it kept getting louder. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. And it was going faster. Boom, 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 boom. And then I heard it. Hey, Rich, I just can't get this kick drum to sound right. So I looked up and there was a speaker for our PA system so the ladies in the nursery can take care of the kids but still listen to the pastor's sermon. And honestly, it kind of frightened me and I was a bit startled at first, but as soon as I realized what was going on, I just couldn't help but laugh. The thing is, I have several friends who also have ghost stories, kind of these creepy things that had happened to them, things that were unexplained or very difficult to explain. When we encounter these possibly supernatural things, I think there's two errors that we typically fall into. Either we completely deny the existence of evil spirits influencing our world, or we see spiritual influence in everything that happens. But neither of these are always the case. But there are some practical applications to being thoughtful about where something lands in between. When I was in Japan, a group of us decided to take a day trip over to Kobe. We took our mission interns to go visit one of the temples in Japan. And as we were approaching, we were discussing about how we should act in that situation. What kind of spiritual environment are we walking into and what should we do in that environment? And there are two conclusions we came up with. 1 Corinthians 8, verse 4. We know that there is no such thing as an idol in the world in that there is no God but one. Also, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 20. The things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. We came to three conclusions. One, there is no power behind the idol or the relic on which they worshipped. Two, there could be demonic forces there trying to blind people, keep them worshipping in Shintoism, rather than seeing the light of Jesus Christ. And third, no matter what case it is of those two, either way, God is the supreme power. And so this is how we decided to behave while we were there. One, be respectful, not of the idol or relic or the temple, but of the people there. And not to ruin our witness by acting rudely. Second, that we do not participate in any of the worship there. We don't ring any prayer bells. We don't do any of the other activities that are associated with worship in that place. And third, be praying, but with our heads up. We were walking around praying for the people that were there, but we were not bowing our heads to make it look like we were praying to the deities that they worship there. And the same could be said about Halloween. I'm not saying that we should embrace it or totally reject it, but we should approach it with wisdom, spiritual awareness, and also a clear conscience. If we look at the context of these two verses, 1 Corinthians 8 and 1 Corinthians 10, we can see that it's about being mindful of our own conscience and the conscience of others, but also avoiding falling into the worship of these idols. 
But I suggest that we use this as an opportunity to witness to people. You're going to have a bunch of visitors, people coming to your front door. Why not give them a Bible tract along with a generous candy? And maybe you have an opportunity to strike up a conversation. Wear a costume that reflects your interests or experiences. Maybe you can strike up a conversation and build a relationship that wasn't there before. But maybe your conscience is telling you not to participate. In that case, spend that time instead of meeting people, use it praying for people, praying for their needs and their spiritual walk. As we pray today, let's pray for spiritual protection. God has given us the armor of God to protect ourselves, as we can see in Ephesians 6, but also still pray to God that he provides protection for you. Also, let's pray for our opportunities to witness this Halloween, that as you're handing out candy, pray that God gives you eyes open to see opportunities to share and to witness. Also, pray for those who are caught up in the spiritual darkness of Halloween. Pray that God brings something into our life that brings them out of that darkness and into his light. So will you please pray with me? Lord, I thank you for this day that we can come together and celebrate you. To give you worship on a day that our country treats as an evil holiday. Lord, I pray for our spiritual protection, that you protect us from those dark forces out there, those ghost stories that frighten us, but they don't stop us from sharing your word, Lord. And Lord, if we participate in these customs and traditions, I pray that you help us to have open eyes, to see opportunities to witness and to share your good news with people. And Lord, this holiday is also one that is celebrated by those who celebrate darkness. Lord, I pray that your light shines to them, that they can come out of that darkness and into your light, so that they too can worship your holy name. Lord, thank you for all these things. Amen. Thank you for praying with me today. If you have any prayer requests, please send them to liftupmyprayer at etbc.org. You can also find more of our prayer requests and other opportunities to pray on our website at www.etbc.org.